This is Man at Arms, Reforged. In this episode, we're going to be focusing on Link, the hero of Hyrule, and his legendary Hylian shield. Illy uses Sharpie and sketches out the pattern for the shield. He then moves on to the Beverly Shear to cut it out. Since Ilya freehand drew the shield, we decided that we better check it for symmetry. I make a quick paper pattern up and just check it along the fold line. So since we've got the sides right, I'm just going to take this off, going to go to the sander and deburr it just to take that sharp edge off the back so we can handle it without being cut. Using a shallow dishing plate, Ilya begins to form the shield. To give the shield the shape, I'm utilizing the hardy hole in the anvil and a dishing stake. The dishing stake is supported by the donut weight that protects the hardy hole from the damage. This is not necessarily the proper sheet working setup. However, for shields, that's the best that I've discovered. Since it's the beginning of the process, the shield is warped to one side, and that happens because I'm right-handed, and, and the material wants to slightly go counterclockwise. Twice. Ilya decided it needed some more form, so he heats up the shield and forms it over a stake with a hammer. The dishing process was simply not giving me enough depth for the shield that I needed. I realized I needed to utilize a technique called hot raising, in which one bends the hot metal around a raising stake in order to achieve the curvature. It's getting rigid, and from now on it's going to get even more rigid as I proceed. The hot work is complete. As you can see, it's extremely rough. And from here on, I have to go and move to the anvil and do some extremely rough planishing. The flat surface of the anvil serves as my guide to beat these raised spots flat. At this stage, I'm going to use what is called an English wheel to complete my planishing process. This particular one came from the MG factory in England. However, the use of the English wheel dates back to the 17th century. What the English wheel does, it planishes out any bumps I have and pushes them back into the material, producing a nice, even surface. Lauren cuts and grinds the amber on a wet lapidary. We've decided to use real amber because it's got a sheen to it that shows up really nice on camera. Once we get it polished, it has an iridescence that almost glows. Now that we've finished cutting, we're going to take it and polish it. We use a yellow rouge, which is good for soft stones and plastic. Using silver bezel wire to create the shape, Warren forms the piece and solders it down on a copper back plate. Lauren sets the amber in the silver bezels. You have to be very careful as the amber is quite soft. For Link's shield, I have to draw the outside border. So here's the dimensions that he gave me to work from. That's the base of our shield. In order for John to be able to cut them on the plasma cutter, I had to break them apart into two different pieces. Using the plasma cutter, we cut out the outer border of the Highland shield. In the game, it shows big, thick borders. So what we did is we cut these pieces out of the same material we'd make a sword blade out of. After cutting, it's now time to deburr the overlays. I now add my steep bevels to the inside to give it that really thick in-game look. It's time to form the overlay over the shield. The best way to do that is to heat up the overlay till they're red hot, almost melting, and slowly creep up the edges of the shield using a set of clamps and tongs so that the pieces fit tightly together. What I'm going to do is I'm going to raise the surface of the metal according to this pattern and create this sharp ridge. Now that the pattern is traced to the back of the shield, it's time to emboss it. Here, Illy's using the Famco kick press to do the outside embossing. He's tracing his outside lines to capture the design. Sam holds the shield for Ilya as he finishes the repose embossing on the inside of the shield. Using the screw press and a chisel, Ilya lays in the design on the top of the shield. Using the MIG welder, Ilya attaches the outside border to the base of the shield. After 
After attaching the outside border, he goes to the grinder and removes the excess weld. Ilya uses the drill press to lay in our central holes for our rivets. He then moves on to the welder and welds the rivets permanently into place. We weld in braces on the inside of the shield to prevent it from warping during the quench. Ilya lowers the shield into the furnace and waits for it to heat up. I thought it would be a great tie-in for this shield to build the original Master Sword. John uses the plasma cutter to cut out the blank for the guard so I can begin sculpting it on the sander. In a previous episode, you guys saw Tony make a longsword version of the Master Sword. I noticed in the comments that a lot of you requested to see the original Master Sword, which is a one-handed sword. It's also red and gold. Instead of doing it in wax and casting it, I thought it would be cool to show it being ground out of a solid block. So this is a big old block of steel. I remove my blade from the heat and forge the bevels. I then go back to the forge and move to the power hammer and draw out my tang. Now that the blade is hardened, I move to the grinders and begin sculpting the blade. So what we did is we lined a barrel with KO wool to make a big enough heat treat furnace to heat treat this shield. We're gonna take a big risk and heat treat this into water. We're gonna quench the shield. The shield is going to get very hard up on the quench after which we're going to temper. This is a crucial step to producing armor that can withstand combat. Once it reaches temperature, he removes it from the furnace and quenches it in water. From here on, it's only cleaning, a little bit of straightening, and we're good. Observing the color changes from the front, I guide Ilya as he heats the shield from behind. We're looking for that straw, maybe slightly into the plum color. Ilya did an amazing job on the embossing, the fitting. I mean, this is a real pain in the butt. He made it look easy. I'm just blown away by this shield. I love it. All I got to do now is clean up the border. On the 220 machine, I begin sanding on the outside rim. I then move on to the soft wheel machine to brighten up the embossing. To protect the gemstones on the shield, we CNC plasma cut out a surround. This will be riveted on the face. I have to file the steel so that I can fit the gemstone section into the center. Ilya grinds in some dimension on the center bezel that will be holding our amber stones. Ilya hand paints on the red design over the blue base coat and then lays the Triforce into place. I've seen a lot of different replicas of this shield made. Most of them look like plastic toys. I think we've gone above and beyond all that and made a shield that looks like it really would have been used in the medieval times. The most iconic thing about Captain America is, of course, his shield. When we were first approached about making these shields, the idea was that they'd be small, like throwing stars. We couldn't have that. We wanted to make them bigger and badder, just like Captain America. In CAD, I traced the Captain America shields in order for John to cut them out on the plasma cutter. The Captain America throwing stars are pretty straightforward. We just gotta get our outer perimeter circle and our inner star drawn. John loads my designs into practical CNC and cuts the shield out of aviation grade chromoly.
Using a center punch and compass, we lay out the lines for the stripes on the shields. After laying the lines out, we take the shields to the lathe where we cut the lines much deeper so they show after forming. Okay, we're going to use a screw press to create the dishing in the shield. We start from the outside and we do a spiral all the way into the middle. Gives us the most even and deep dish. This one puts down about 40 tons of pressure. Using a different screw press, I'm now going to lay in the lines for the star. I first drew in my lines with a sharpie. I'm literally just going to walk the chisel right up to the center. I'm now using a specially made fake rivet tool going to chisel in the tips of the stars so they look like they're rivets. After chiseling designs into the stars, I form them on the press as well. Using a square stake, Ilya turned out the lips of the shields to create our puncturing edges. Because right now, when you throw it, even if this is sharp, the curvature of the shield will not allow it to penetrate the object. When you have a straight surface that is parallel to the trajectory, it allows for the force to be transferred efficiently into the target. After heat treating, I remove the scale on the wire wheel. Using a 60 durometer contact wheel, I smooth out the shields. Looks real uneven, doesn't look like much, but I'm going to use an old hot rodder trick. All we really do is just apply a little WD-40, and then we go to the scotch brake. Using the drill press, I drill a hole in the center of the shield to then be able to plug weld the stars on. I hold the star in the center of the shield so John can MIG weld from behind. After I lay out my lines, I use a two inch contact wheel to serrate the edge on the shield. So we're doing three different Captain America shields. I thought it would be cool to show three different edges. Our first one had a serrated edge, this one's going to be a razor sharp smooth edge. I decided to give the third shield a really aggressive look. Using a sharpie, I lay out my lines for grinding. Now I go back to the two inch wheel to grind in my radial saw pattern. After polishing the first shield, I tape it for paint. Following the guidelines that Carrie laid in on the shields, I use a razor knife to cut away some of the tape. After removing the tape from the first and the third rings, I spray on the first coat of red. Hey, what do you think? Oh, I... After the paint dries, I remove the excess tape. If you wait till it's fully dry, it helps pull some of the paint off with it. Now that we have our red base coat, I re-tape and re-cut out the star. Now that the paint is dry, I remove the tape to reveal the star. You guys asked for Captain America throwing stars, so we're gonna give them to you. possesses shields and weaponry from the Greek era, which means they were most likely made out of bronze. A wheel man at arms like to make things indestructible. So Ilya is going to take us on a journey of how to create one of these shields by hand out of steel, all in one piece. Using the CNC plasma cutter, I cut out a 25 inch circle from 4130 chromoly steel. Before 
Ilya has to handle the shield, Phil's going to take it to the Bader Sanders and remove the burrs. Ilya begins raising the shield rather than dishing it. One of the main reasons is that dishing thins the material. Because he's going to create a fair amount of form, we want this shield to be as thick as possible. So he begins a raising process, working under his armoring forge. He'll be able to do all this work hot, thickening the material as he goes. Later, he'll begin to planish and create a smoother surface before he has to go to his final form. So here I have some modeling compound that I'm going to use to create the buckles and the shield strap supports that will attach the straps to the inside of Wonder Woman's shield. I'm going to use some modeling tools here with some fine points and some good curvature for doing detail. Now this type of clay requires uh, baking in a kiln in order to harden it. And once it's been hardened, I can go back in and I can finish it up even a little bit more. Using a broad, flat planishing hammer, Ilya begins to take out the highs and lows from the deep hammering into the shield. Now, he's got to work backwards and start adding some texture. It's got to match the one in the movie, and that one's far from smooth. I've created this texturing surface on my planishing hammer. As I'm doing the final forming on the shield, the texture is going to be embedded in the surface of the shield. I'm making a two-part resin mold for the belt buckle and, and for the belt that Rick has carved. So we're about to pour the molds material. I've mixed the two parts together. It's a equal part hardener and resin. And we'll pour it in. And then in about 24 hours, we'll cut it open and pour some waxes in it and detail the waxes. So what we're now doing is adding a crackle finish to the center of the shield. I'm assisting Ilya by holding it on a mandrel as he uses a hammer and chisel to strike in our design. In the movie, it has a very scaled up, cracked looking surface to it. Maybe it happened with Doomsday, hit the center of the shield and it heated up and then cooled down real quick. Maybe that's happened many different times over the years, but we're trying to mimic that surface. I think it's looking pretty good. We're just gonna keep going until we get this whole inside done and then Ilya will be able to move on to the other detail. The next step on Wonder Woman's shield is to roll the edges. What I have to do is measure the shield. I already have a small divot that indicates the original center of the shield. I take my compass and draw a chalk line. On armor, in any analogous work, a straight, finely rolled edge either makes or breaks the piece. So I have to be very patient and very careful. Even with a preliminary roll, the shield became rigid, so it doesn't wobble all over the place like a piece of paper. It is very rigid at the moment because the flute, which is the preliminary roll, contains the entire wave of distortion that would go along the shield when you move it around and traps it. See, it doesn't move. Before the edge on the shield is completely rolled, it is always nice to tuck in a little bit of wire right here in the gap. The wire allows the edge to be rounder than a completely flattened one and guides your rolled edge right into the perfect form. 
Second thing is, it's always nice to have a little bit extra material right here so that I can manipulate the shield even after the edge is rolled without fear of squishing it. Now that the mold compound is fully set up, Lauren will be able to remove it from its frame, cut down to the master, extract that section, and then we'll be able to shoot wax into the cavity. So I've done a slight zigzag to the cut at first so that it has a place to lock into. After the surface is planished in texture and the edge is rolled, it's time to introduce the flutes. Flutes are crinkles in the material that are introduced in an organized manner. In our case, they're concentric circles. As you can plainly see, I already started introducing some of the flutes, but I still have quite a bit more to go. I have to complete this larger flute and introduce smaller ones that in the actual shield you see in the movie are more of a suggestion of a flute rather than an actual thing. Remember, what they do, they introduce axes of rigidity. And across those axes, it becomes very hard to bend the piece. They break up the shock wave that a piece experiences when it is being struck and consequently improve the overall structure of the piece. Now that we have all the wax buckles sprued, it's time to mix some investment, pour it in the mold, and then put it in the kiln to harden. We're almost ready to cast. Right now, what we're doing, we're refining the fake rivets on the shield. In fact, the prop you see in the movie, the rivets are not real, they're fake. From the outside, they experienced as divots, so they're concave, and on the inside, they're convex. So, this is what we're doing. I already set my basic dimple shape in there, but I have to come in with a rounded chisel, crescent chisel, to refine the border going from the inside out into the flat of the end. So this is one we've done, you can see how crisp it is. This is one we haven't done with the chisel yet. You can see how much nicer it is after we do the chiseling. Now that all four flasks have sat in the kiln overnight and baked to the proper temperature, and our molten bronze is ready to go, it's time to do some casting. Kerry removes the crucible from the furnace and then goes straight to our casting machine, pours it into the investment. Now that the investment has cooled down, it's time to move to the quench. Lauren places the cooled flask into the water. It bubbles up and reveals that our parts have casted perfectly. So the next step is one of our major points in the shield, and that's adding the eagle on the center of the shield. Now in the movie, we have only seen some subtle hints of the eagle on the inside of the shield. It just barely shows up when the shield glows. When it cools back down, you can't really see it. So we're not gonna worry about doing some really deep relief. We're just gonna do some low relief to give it the subtle suggestion of the eagle. Ilya's has drawn the design on the inside with some chalk, and we're gonna chisel into a lead block 
which is gonna create that relief. I'm just gonna be here as support holding it as Ilya does all the work, just like always. Now that our bronze buckles have been cast successfully, it's time to move on to polishing. Since Rick did all the original sculpting, we figured he should have the honor. He's gonna first scotch bright, then buff, they're ready to be mounted. At this point, I'm almost done with the lettering around the rim of the shield, which are done very much like the eagle, except they require a slightly finer level of detail, as the letters are so small. So to that end, I move to the vise and place my lead block vertically, and the edges are beveled out. So this distance is the same as this, allowing for the letters to have some resistance as I drive them in, embossing, with a chisel. After roughing out the letters into a lead block, we now have to move to a steel mandrel and crisp everything up. This will give us a nice flat surface instead of rounded letters. Billy is now locating where the holes will have to be to hold the straps. He's gonna use a spring set or a punch to locate for the drill, take it out to the drill press and drill through these holes. The shield is now ready for heat treating. What I did, I created a small frame to the back which captures it, kind of like a jewel, as it goes into the kiln, where it will heat up to approximately 1500 degrees and then go into the water tank right here. After that, I will still have to temper it. Now that our shield is just about done, we have the leather straps riveted in place. The final step is for Kerry to gold leaf our outside ring and then to move on to the lettering. We're almost done. I think in this build, Ilya has really demonstrated that you don't need a whole lot of fancy tools to make a beautiful round shield. He added a lot of details and did a lot of hard work to make this one happen. I think it turned out fantastic and I can't wait to test it in the demos. Click here to subscribe or click here to watch more episodes. Thanks for watching Man at Arms Reforged. We need to know what you want the guys to build, so tell us in the comments below what weapons you want to see next.